Okay, well, I have a question for the adults in the room. How many, raise your hand, how many of you knew when you grew up what you wanted to be? Or not when you grew up. Well, you knew when you were little what you wanted to be when you grew up. Okay, a couple of you, all right. And we have a few kids in the room, so kids, raise your hand if right now you know what you want to be when you grow up. <laughs> oh, good. All right, well... How many of you believe, and this is for all of you, how many of you believe that if you go to high school and you go to college, you're guaranteed a job when you graduate? All right. Well, that's good. Nobody raised their hands. <laughs> so you see, the thing is, is that I believe that. I was raised to go to high school, go to college, get a, get a great job. And I, that, that fallacy and that thinking was that I didn't get a great job after college, and here's the truth, is that 2.4 million people will graduate in t this year in the class of 2010 with an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. And only one in five will get a job. Yikes, right? So here's, here's the awesome thing, is that over the last year, I have researched over 300 young entrepreneurs from around the world. And I've interviewed over 140 of them, including most of their parents. And what's so exciting is that I've learned so much. And this, today I want to share with you that these children didn't wait until they grew up to do something awesome with their life. They didn't wait until after college. In fact, many of them didn't wait until, gosh, they were out of elementary school. So today I want to start with Ryan Ross. Ryan, at the age of three, began his business selling eggs. When he was five years old, he bought his first piece of real estate. And at eight years old, his portfolio is worth close to a million dollars. Ryan now spends a lot of time going around the world speaking about his success. And actually, he invests a lot of the money from his businesses into not only feeding and clothing, but building houses for people in third world countries. Ryan, as you can tell, likes to play ice hockey, and his dream is to buy his very own NHL team. So of course, he can play hockey. He's well on his way to doing that, too. Next, we have Emil Matichka. I think this is too close to me. Next, we have Emil Matichka, and Emil wrote his first business plan when he was in the third grade at, at nine years old. His teacher encouraged them to start a business, and to invest the money into preparing and paying for college. Emil's mom got cancer when he was 13, and he started that business plan, put it into action, turning loads of grass into piles of cash. By the time he was a senior in high school, he was making over $100,000 a year. Anybody excited about that? <laughs> OK. Next, we have Juliet Brindak, and Juliet loved to draw. At the age of 10, she was beyond Barbie, but not quite into Britney, of course, and she wanted to create a space that was just for tween girls. She started a company and created an online forum for them. E Julia is 18, and she has just been named to the Self-Made Magazine's list of top 50 female entrepreneurs. And her company, Miss Owen Friends, is worth over $15 million. Keith J. Davis Jr. began his business selling candy and bubblegum to um, his elementary school classmates. Now he boasts a multifaceted career as an author, actor, model, speaker, publisher, and nonprofit founder, as well as a commercial realtor. He has won a lot of awards, and his book, Young, So What?, gives you 10 steps to achieving success in life and in business. Jason O'Neill began his business when he was just nine years old because he wanted to make some extra money. How many of us in the room could, earn some, could use some extra money? <laughs> Probably most of us. Everybody's hand, I'm sure, should be raised. And Jason had no idea that his creation, the pencil bug, would be sold around the world, earning him top awards across the nation and across the world, including being named to the Forbes top 10 list of role models under 18. Jason and his story have been written about in five books. 
And just this year, he published his own book, Bitten by the Business Bug. Jason is only 15, and he speaks professionally on a regular basis. Allison Ames started baking when she was just five years old. And by the time she was 17, she was named as the best young chef in America. She opened up her company, Wonderland Bakery, as in Alice in Wonderland. And she had this bakery that was absolutely gorgeous. The first location was in Newport Beach, California. And the second location, Befitting of Tinseltown, opened up in LA this summer. Allison was one of the the young entrepreneurs that we met in our national entrepreneurship tour as a family this year, who inspired my daughter, my 11-year-old daughter, to write and publish her own cookbook at the age of 11, and to use the profits from that cookbook to help support cancer victims, children with cancer, in connection with the, Cle the Keaton Raphael Memorial Foundation in Roseville, California. Michael Dunlap was a dyslexic young entrepreneur who started his company on eBay. How many of you sell on eBay? Nobody sells on eBay? Okay, a couple people. So he started his company selling on eBay and then transitioned into doing websites. He's made several websites, and so we'll fast forward to right now. He has one of the top ranked websites for young entrepreneurs, making over 100000 in its first year of operation. And you can find that at IncomeDiary.com. Glosson Tay is an articulate young blogger who wrote and published his first book of poetry when he was eight years old. He actually illustrated that book as well. Now he's 10, actually now he's 12, and he has published a couple different books. He's also featured and spoken in front of such dignitaries as the Prime Minister and First Lady of Malaysia. I could go on and on all day long talking about these kids. I get so juiced up and excited interviewing them, seeing what they're doing, what they're accomplishing. It is absolutely inspiring. But I know you didn't come to hear me speak all day. So I want to share with you what we've learned. Among many things, we've learned one thing that has been common across the board. We've figured out that vision, all of them had vision. Vision plus the right mindset plus action, of course, has led to results that absolutely rock. You'll hear stories, if you go to our website, you'll hear stories that are just amazing and you think, why didn't I think of that when I was three or five or eight or 10? So how can we help these kids? Well, I believe that we can help them by starting in our family. When we start in the family, and that is a picture of my family, but when we start in the family, we can teach them Things like to look at their gifts and to encourage them to take their gifts and turn them into profit. And if they lack vision, we can introduce them to young entrepreneurs such as the ones that you've seen today. You can also support them in their business ventures right now rather than telling them to wait until they're older or telling them to wait until after they graduate. We can also give them a safe place to fail. How many of you are entrepreneurs in the room? Wouldn't you agree that sometimes you fail? Even the best business plans sometimes don't work out. And so when we encourage our kids to try things, knowing that sometimes it won't work out, we give them a safe place to fail, they will have that crucial piece for success. Also, it's important that we give them a place to just have fun. Being a kid is about having fun, about going on an adventure. So I think it's important that we give them a place to have fun. In closing, I want to share with you a quote that you've heard before, but with a little twist. When we give a teen or a tween a fish, you'll feed them for a day. But when you teach them to fish and you instill in them best business practices, you will not only feed them for a lifetime, but you just might help to develop the next billion-dollar business leader. Thank you.